Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with a 20 box blaster case for reals this time of 2018-19 Panini Donner's Optic Basketball. One spot gets you two random teams in a 20 box break. So big thanks to these folks for getting into it. One spot gets you two teams. So let's double you up like Sir Mix-a-Lot. And all 30 are in. And let's randomize each list 10 times. Five and a five, 10 the hard way. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and tenth and final time. After ten times, we've got Jimmy Black down to David Barrows. Five and a five, ten the hard way for the teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and tenth and final time. Good luck. After ten times, we've got the 76ers on top and the Bulls on the bottom. Now feel free to trade. Keep in mind this is 2018-19. NBA draft just happened tonight, so we can chat some hoops in just a moment here. All right, Jimmy with the Sixers. Greg with the Spurs. Dave Barrows with the Warriors. Greg with the Pacers. Dave Barrows with the Knicks and the Clippers. Jared, you got the Cavs. Eric with the Kings, Ryan with the Mavs, Wizards for Eric, Dave Barrows with the T-Wolves, Greg, you have the Pelicans, Eric with the Rockets, Bucks, Suns, and Nets, and Dave, you have the Grizz. Eric with the Pistons, Jimmy with the Magic, Eric, you got my Lakers, Jared with the Heat, Eric with the Nuggets, Ryan with the Hawks, Eric with the Jazz, Greg with the Celtics, Dave Barrows with the Raptors, the Champs, Eric with the Hornets, David with the Trailblazers, Eric with the Thunder, and the Bulls for Mr. Dave Barrows. Let's sort by column B by team. And unlike last time, for those of you who remember last time, here is the, uh, the blaster boxes right here. We got that situation sorted out. All right, no trades. I don't think there's going to be any trades. So let's print and rip. TWC, trade window closed. There's the seal right there. Good luck, everybody. So you can see five rows of four. One, two, three, four, and five to make 20. It's all sitting out there. Thanks very much, everyone, for getting in. That's what we're looking at right here. 28 cards per box. And, there, there, and then there's no, uh, not an autograph guaranteed. For each box but usually per case I feel like there's a few more maybe I think the the fun parallels are really what is the big chase in these blaster breaks so I'm grab one more thing Two box for all of the cards. All right, good luck, everybody. NBA draft happened today. Obviously, me being a Lakers fan, there was really nothing important that happened. Lakers traded away everything.
So they're, they're stuck with trying to figure out how to fill out a team. How to fill out a team with not a lot of money left over. But Zion went one. I think everyone figured that would happen. Zion went one and now the price of the Pelicans have got, has just gotten really expensive in next year's basketball sets. There's Eric Gordon. It's a parallel that will ship, but it's not numbered. I guess we'll save. Usually the ones that are refractory, that are silvers like that, are the ones that sell really well. Or at least it did. I'm sure it still does. But we'll set one of those aside for the Mavs. That'll go to Ryan Miller. We'll top load one of these, and obviously you'll get the, you'll get shipped the rest if there are any more. All right, next one. Well, what what does everyone think about the uh, NBA draft? Just as it relates to the hobby, or as it relates to your favorite team. You know, I mean, are there players that you think will be like sleeper picks for the hobby? You know, that might be a little underrated. There's always things like that every year. Matt Schwartz, what's going on? Heard anything on Zion signing or not signing with Panini yet? So you know, someone else mentioned that earlier today too. Um, I have not heard anything about that. I can't imagine. I mean, Zion is probably... Zion is probably one of the highest, one of the most hyped, one of the most hyped players um, going into a draft in a very long time. Like, think about it. Luka Doncic wasn't highly touted, right? You know, he was a lottery pick, but, you know, there was a lot of question marks on what, what, what was going to happen. So he, but only until he started performing really well did his card start to skyrocket. You know, can you imagine like if Panini um, allows him to get exclusive by Upper Deck? You know, who are notorious for not necessarily releasing those autos too often. So, and I think maybe last year. Was it last year? Last year, I think they re-upped their exclusive with the NBA and the NBA Players Association. So do we really think that that with all that money involved? And these licenses aren't cheap. But with all that money involved, do you think Panini would, would not be super aggressive on negotiations? I don't know. We'll find out soon enough, but... But it'd be a huge. I mean, if I'm and if I'm on if I'm on the Panini side, that's my argument, right? There, there's like we're we're not paying this much for the NBA license, only to miss out on one of the biggest, um, to only to miss out on one of the biggest names, uh, like pre-draft and draft type names in a long, long time. Because think about it, a lot of players enter the draft and you're like, okay, whatever, who knows what's going to happen. Then they become big once they have strong rookie campaigns, right? This is what, this is like not since like LeBron James do I feel like there's a lot of pre-draft and draft day hype about a player. So if I'm on Panini's side, I'm, I'm like, man, I don't want to miss out on that. I'm throwing money at Zion, you know, doing whatever it takes, you know, to get him to sign a deal with Panini or at least avoid him being exclusive by another manufacturer. Now, if I'm someone like upper deck, you know, I'm definitely trying to get an exclusive. Absolutely. You know, then you're like, Hey, we're the guys that have premier names, Matt, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, even Ben Simmons to a certain extent, you know? So, Now, as as a uh, as someone with a big stake in jazbeescasebreaks.com, 
I definitely am rooting for Zion to be in Panini products. It's, it's hashtag good for the hobby. But Matt saying, if you, you would think a deal would be done by now, yeah. I, I don't know that I couldn't even speculate on. I don't know how long these deals take or, you know, when did when did Ben Simmons make and when did Upper Deck and Ben Simmons make an announcement a couple years ago, two three years ago? Ah, oh, don't say that, Dave Barrows. You got to root for the hobby. You got to root for Jaspies. Root for the hobby. Dave Barrows is like, I think Zion's gonna pull a LeBron and Simmons. I hope he doesn't. We'll try to find some, Jerry. If we if we can find more object buckets, we'll we'll get some more. But I'm looking at Panini's Twitter, just like their most recent post. They've got some draft night posts for like Panini instants and stuff like that, but I don't see anything on I don't see anything on Zion yet. So we'll see. We'll see. There's Green Kevin Love to 149. Rich saying, "Man, the upper deck needs to make products." Then, well, I, that's the diff That's the weird thing. They, well, no, I mean they can. Right? I was going to say it's Panini that has the exclusive for NBA. That goes to the Cavs. That'll be for Jared. But why not just throw just th throw us a bigger bone in like Goodwin Champions or something like that? I'm oh, sorry. It's a redemption. Or uh, points, that is. That'll go to one person in the break. Winner take all in the points if we pulled more. I'll set that off to the side. Yeah, I, I lied. Card Blasters, I didn't even realize that until Eric Bailey told me. I saw Bol Bol as a Heat, but then he got traded to the Nuggets. But he's definitely, yeah, Eric Bailey's like project player. Definitely a project player. He's coming off a foot injury or an ACL injury or something like that. That knocked him out for much of last season. Right? I remember he was balling with Oregon. Jason Jasky is a big Oregon fan. So I know he was giving me updates. He was balling with Oregon, and then he went down with an injury, out for the rest of the season. So, you know, you're always worried about a seven-plus footer with uh, lower body issues, leg issues, ankle issues, foot issues. All right, and we get an autograph. Yes, Mo Wagner. Mo Wagner. He might get traded too. The Lakers need to free up like another. They need to free up as much cap space as they can get if they want to get to that thirty million mark. <sighs> Sorry, Mo. You still have to work on that autograph though. If you want to be a star in the league, that goes to the Lakers. That'll be for Erickson Sala. <laughs> yeah, Rich Schmidt is like. This draft is going to make products expensive. And then Eric Bailey goes, Nick's posting a filler tonight for 2019-20 NT Pelicans. <laughs> we might. We should. I think it was those injuries that ha had him fall in the draft, Sanford. I think teams got nervous. But yeah, Nick Jaspi, if you're listening, let's post that now. 30 spots, 100 bucks a spot. <laughs> They'll have to be randomizer to get into the, t the, the randomizer. <laughs> what, what, did we, what did we sell? Do you guys remember what we sold Mavs for in NT? Six, five or 600 bucks? Oh, more than that? 1100 bucks? Jesus. Oh, man. What, what are the pal Well, here's the thing. It'll also depend on... It'll also depend on how Zion starts the season, too. Let's, let's think about Luka Doncic hype, right? 
preseason, how many people were 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 how many people wanted the Mavs? I mean, they were a good team, but and there was there was some hype. But people weren't tripping over themselves to 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 get the Mavs. At least I don't remember from last summer. Rich, do you remember? I know you were buying a lot of basketball last year too. Um, so, gosh, it, but when the season started, think about all the Luka Doncic highlights. Oh, Luka Doncic, youngest player to get, you know, yeah, it was more Trey Young hype. Luka Doncic, youngest player to get a triple double since LeBron this early in the season since LeBron James, you know. So, such and such amount of points. First to hit 30 points in a game since LeBron James, you know, this early in the season. Blah, 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 blah. So there was enough of those games, enough triple-double games, enough, like, big scoring nights where Luka Doncic, that hype suddenly got big really fast early in the season. Right. DeAndre Ayton was another big one, too. And so... So I think once we were a month or two into the season, by the time we were around Christmas, Luka Doncic hype skyrocketing. Right? DeAndre Ayton kind of was still high, but kind of plateaued a little bit. Trey Young actually, I think, from the early preseason hype dipped a little bit. And then, like Eric Bailey saying, Trey Young really came on late in the season, and then his stuff started to skyrocket back up again. And then Doncic stuff just was like a runaway train. That just kept going up and up and up. So by the time we got to NT, yeah, that, I mean, that team's selling for 1100 bucks in NT basketball, which was priced as an expensive product in the first place, too. You know, Mavs notwithstanding. So I, I think preseason hype will always keep the Pelicans expensive next year. What will make the Pelicans like an eye-watering price will be if Zion does well. So it's a blessing and a curse, right? If he if he sucks the first couple months of the season, you know, then everyone's just like, oh, he's a bust. <laughs> That's not good for the hobby. But if he's great, then the price of everything goes up, which then maybe the regular guy can't afford the Pelicans anymore. So... So that, that, makes, it a, that makes it a tricky... That makes it a tricky situation. Obviously, we want Zion to do well early and often. You know, we want to see him take over games. We want alley oops from Drew Holiday. Holiday to Zion, slam dunk. We want to see ESPN highlights. We want to see monster blocks. We want to see, you know, like what player would you want? I guess you would want to see LeBron James get blocked by Zion. That NBA would go nuts. ESPN would melt down. Zion Williamson blocks LeBron James. And I'm talking like a block into the seats, right? LeBron driving to the basket, going up for a shot, right? And then Zion just whack. Goes into the fourth row. Lakers in New Orleans. See, that's good for the hobby. Mike Connolly on the Jazz now, right? I feel like with all the AD stuff, Mike Connolly going to the Jazz was kind of under the radar. Signature Series, Hamadou Diallo, OKC. Eric with the Thunder. All right, next box. But if you're a collector, folks, and you and you kind of approach collecting like stock market, basketball is one of the best sports to do that because you know some of the top rookies can go for so much. Like the difference between like a mid-range rookie price in football versus mid-range rookie price, you know, in basketball is huge. Like, sure, Baker Mayfield stuff sold like hotcakes, right? You know, as the top rookie in the NFL, maybe Saquon too. But 
you take the top rookie in the NBA, Trey Young and Luka Doncic, their prices consistently outshine uh, NFL. So basketball is pretty good to uh, to invest in if you like playing that sort of game. Um, Dave Barrow saying Marvin Bagley, he's going to be eating eating up some uh, Marvin Bagley. He thinks he's going to be a great player. Rich Schmidt buying into buying on Bagley too. That Kings team is going to be really interesting, I think. It's a fast, exciting team. I don't know who they drafted today, but whatever pick they have and whoever they can get in free agency could be really interesting. But yeah, for those of you who follow basketball pretty closely, um, second-year players will be really interesting to chase. I think... Um, uh, what you call it? What was the Nuggets' number one pick last year? Michael Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. is another player that a lot of people were kind of casually buying low on last year, or I guess in this year's set, he'd be a rookie in this year's set. He was injured all last year. If he's healthy this year, people say he could have been a top top five pick, top three pick. If he was healthy. Porzingis with the Mavs next year. That's interesting. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about Kevin Knox. The the problem with the Knicks is that either the Knicks. <laughs> and um, and the trouble is, is like, well, where's Kevin Knox even going to be? Is he going to be part of a trade that sends? I mean, they're kind of guard heavy, so is he going to be? Is he going to be part of a trade, or is he part of the future? Until that's decided, then I don't know. I guess he had a, he had an okay year last year, right? Let me slide some of these boxes closer. Fins up. What's going on, Chris? I like Bagley, but he made a diss track on your boy Dame. And Dame fired back and destroyed him. I would not. I would not write a diss track, a, a disrespectful, a disrespectful track on uh, on Dame, because he is one of the few athletes. I think he may be the only athlete that I know. That, who has tried music that is actually really good, especially in the in the uh, the hip hop world. I guess Bernie Williams is a baseball player. I think he's a good guitarist, blues guy or something like that, jazz guy. But in terms of all the wannabe rappers that are that are amongst the. Uh, the professional sport ranks. There's another Hamadou Diallo. Dame's pretty good. And that's just a, not numbered, but a different parallel here for uh, Eric and the Thunder. I like Colin Sexton, David Barrows, on Cleveland. Yeah, I think he could be really interesting. I mean, he's going to have a lot of time to develop and a lot of time to play and grow his game under not a lot of pressure. And I could see him, I could see him being like, a, almost like a, like a Devin Booker type, right? You know, maybe maybe you develop as the really the only main scoring option on a team or something like that. And he's just gonna get a lot of points, and he could develop pretty well. Look out! Look out! Kemba Walker developed. He t developed into a, 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 a scorer of a lot of buckets. But hobby-wise, I would say basketball is probably one of the best sports to invest in hobby-wise. If you're serious about doing it, if you're just having fun with it, don't worry about it. Just 
just buy whatever you like and you know join whatever group breaks you like on jazbeescasebreaks.com. Have fun with it. Don't worry about it. You know. But there's a lot of value here because draft is only one night long. It's really the first night, first round that really matters. You know, and there's rosters aren't very big. And so guys can make immediate impacts on a team like this guy <laughs> once they join a team. You know, so their fortunes can change. Their values can change very quickly depending on how well they do. Roy's wonder if Katie and Tom, Clay Thompson will be a warrior next. I'm all, I'm pretty certain. I, I don't I don't have any inf inside information, but just from just from absorbing. Excuse me. Um, just absorbing a lot of information, you know. And Michael Thompson, Clay's dad, is a uh, part time like radio host here on local ESPN radio, and is uh, and works for the Lakers doing color commentary for the radio broadcast, right? So um, he said himself that that Clay is going to stay with the Warriors. Clay, I think, has intimated, I don't think he's actually said it, but I think he's implied that he would take less to stay with, if he had to, he would, he would take less with the Warriors. I think Clay Thompson stays. Also remember Clay Thompson's, you know, season all already season ending injury. I think players recover better from that sort of stuff, right? But when you start to look at down here, when you get Achilles injuries, then that that changes players. Look at Demarcus Cousins. He's solid now. It's not like Demarcus Cousins is a bad player, but but you know that that Boogie Cousins explosiveness isn't isn't really there. So that's a risk. I don't know. KD will walk. I think someone will still max out KD. I think this Knicks will still max out KD actually. And they'll say, "Hey, you sit for a year. We'll try to get another lottery pick. You know, add some more free agents and then by the when you come back, you'll have a team set up for you." Maybe the Warriors, you know, maybe the Warriors or maybe the market will change. The market will be like, ah, we're nervous about KD and that Achilles. We don't want to max out KD. Maybe we'll, we'll, maybe we'll do one and one deals, you know, or short two and one deals or something like that. Um, if that's the case, then maybe that opens up the opportunity for the Warriors to snag KD at a lower price. Maybe not a suit, maybe not a max max price. I don't know all the specific numbers wise, but maybe they can get a little bit of a discount. Katie's already already familiar with those two parties are already familiar with each other. Could be easy. Vito, what's going on? I'm just talking about Michael Porter Jr. Could be interesting. Buddy Heal could be part of a pretty exciting team. Yeah, well, the Knicks, I think, original master plan was move the three pick and their youngsters to get Anthony Davis, right? Then you, then you sign KD, then you sign Kyrie. So they would open the season with KD, Anthony Davis, Kyrie Irving, and then whatever guard is left, probably like Dennis Smith Jr. or Alonzo Trier or something like that. And then they'll fill out the rest of the team. I mean, instantly, that team in the East, they have decent coaching and they can play together, maybe played some decent defense. And with a healthy KD. Oof. <laughs> but that did not materialize for them. I don't think they had the pieces... The young pieces that the Pelicans required. And we've got old Calvin Murphy for the Rockets. From old school going to Eric and the Rockets.
But with Clay Thompson and KD, they're 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 definitely whether no matter what team they're on, they're definitely not playing next year. They're out for the 2019-20 season. So that suddenly makes every basketball team has hope now, right? I mean, I'm just gonna take a quick look at look at the standings, last year's standings. And if you take the Warriors out of the equation, you know, let's say in the West, you don't think the Nuggets are hungry? They added Mike Conley. I think they added Mike Conley, right? Or was it the Jazz that added Mike Conley? Someone added Mike Conley. Well, whatever, whoever, Nuggets or Jazz, they're excited. They're adding to already playoff teams, you know? Trailblazers. Healthy Nurkic, they got, if they had a healthy Nurkic, that might have made the Western Conference final different. OKC is definitely interested. You know, they want to try to add some pieces. Paul George, Westbrook, Stephen Adams, and, you know, that could be something. Spurs always have a solid team. Clippers, if they get Kawhi, Kawhi on that solid team, coach solidly. Kings, Lakers, T-Wolves even, Grizz, no, maybe not Grizz. But, you know, those, those borderline playoff teams, you know, they, they want all that to happen. Maybe J.J. Redick ends up on the Lakers. Vito, what's going on? Been watching your stream past couple days. Thank you. Big fan. Appreciate it. Want to get more involved, but I never did breaks for Mind giving me a quick breakdown of the process? Um, yes, I can. There's Kevin Durant right there. So basically, like, let's say, let's take this break, for example, right? We've got four boxes left here. Let's take this break, for example. It's a random break, so people pay a flat price to get a random team. So when all 30 spots fill up, right, there's 30 teams in basketball. When all 30 spots fill up, I randomize everybody's names, and I randomize everybody's teams, or uh, randomize all the teams, and you get matched together with a team. So if you're, like, Dave Barrows, right, and he gets randomized... The Bulls in this break with that configuration. So he gets randomized the Bulls. So every Bulls card, right? Usually veteran commons won't ship. But other than that, every Bulls card will get shipped to David Barrows. And that's it. If he gets autographs, he gets Wendell Carter Jr. or something like that, that'll go to Dave. Now, the risk is that there won't be any significant Bulls cards. Maybe there's no autograph. That's definitely a possibility too. So that's the risk. So that's pretty much how it works. The other version is a uh, pick your team version where you can buy a team straight up on that list, but depending on the quantity and quality of hits that can be potentially pulled, that will change the pricing of the team. So like, like the Dallas Mavericks, obviously with Luka Doncic, it's a very popular team. That would easily be the most expensive team in this break. You know, second most expensive team, probably the Hawks, right? They don't have a lot of hits or not a super popular team. You know, they'll be one of the cheapest teams on there. And so then whatever the configuration is, if you read the item descriptions, they'll always say, you know, X number of boxes and an RT or random team or a pick your team, PYT. And then... Blah, 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 blah. Once the break sells out, then we start the video. We record the video. And then we open up all the boxes on camera like I'm doing now. And then, you know, like this Lori Markinen insert. We'll go to Dave, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And pack everything up and send it all out. Now, the idea is you can be like, well, why not just buy a blaster box and go do that. You can, but you got a chance to get a couple teams in a 20 case blaster box break. So most, most people aren't gonna buy 20 boxes at a time and start ripping open boxes, right? Some of them might. So that's the advantage of the, it, it'll, it, it makes more sense for 
really high priced product as well. You know, stuff people, stuff most people can't afford. Most people aren't going to be spending $1,000 on a National Treasures basketball box. But, you know, if you pay for a team that you really like, because the risk is what if you buy, what if you pay $1,000 for a box and then you're like, oh, I didn't get anybody I wanted. I got some nice stuff and what if I didn't get someone I wanted or what if the, what if the hits in here aren't worth $1,000 and I've lost money, which is the risk. So that's why these group breaks exist so you can kind of get into, you're kind of, it's a kind of a timeshare, right? Everyone's kind of splitting up a case together. You're splitting a case with your friends. And then just getting the cards you, you were assigned with for the team you assigned. Does that make sense, Vito? Or did I confuse you even more? But that's generally how it works. And then from there, there'll be other variations based on the serial number on the back of a card or something like that. All right, two boxes to go. Uh, Fins up was saying, Fins up was saying Portland or the Lakers will go to the finals this year. I appreciate that, Chris. I just don't have faith that Rob Palinka and the staff will be able to. Uh... All right, Vito gets it. Awesome. You're welcome, man. Um, I don't. I don't know if I trust uh, the Lakers to fill out the rest of that roster effectively. It was, it was garbage last year. You know, they, they, they let they let Brooke Lopez walk. They had money for him, too. It's not like they, they They took that Brooke Lopez money and turned it into, like, JaVel McGee. JaVel McGee, like, 15 minutes a night, not that bad. But we're, we were asking him to play 30 minutes a night. That's not good. You know, so, yeah, there are, there are a lot of bad roster moves. The key is AD staying healthy. I'm not super concerned about AD's health. If you actually look the last few seasons, um, he's actually been pretty healthy. So I think that the earlier in his career, maybe he had that kind of injury bug sort of attached to him. But I think the last few years, I don't think it's that bad. And he only sat out a lot of games last year. It was like with fake injuries. They didn't want him to get injured. So they could trade him and not end up like KD and Clay Thompson. No, yeah, I know, Chris. Laker till you die, I love it. But do you have faith in Rob Palinka and that that's that squad to build to build that roster? I'm not as optimistic about that. Initially, I, I thought, okay, you take the cap, the remaining cap money, you spread it around real smart. But now I don't think they could. Now I'm like, lose, I'm flipping my position on that. I don't think they can do that. So now I'm, I'm starting to think, I'm flip flopping to, they should get as much cap space as possible, get one more person that's a can't miss, right, and then just fill up the rest of the roster with like, with like. G League guys and undrafted free agents and vet min guys and whatever mid-level exceptions we have and blah, blah, blah. So you have three guaranteed stars <laughs> instead of two in solid players. All right, last spot. <laughs> Kobe's not coming back. He's done. Kobe's been busy winning Academy Awards. His, his head is out of the game. He's coaching his kids. He's coaching his daughter's basketball teams. He's teaching them the triangle offense, which is a, which is a true story, or elements of the triangle offense. True story. All right, our last blaster box. Our sweet Lou Williams, Jeremy Lin, and... Got to randomize the points. So let's go back to random.org. Wow, Dodgers almost lost. Did I see that score right? Come on, Dodgers bullpen. 
Dodgers win 9-8. Giants scored three in the top of the seventh and four in the top of the ninth. A bullpen is going to be the undoing of the Dodgers. All right. Anyway, back to basketball. Everyone has a shot right here. we got Ryan down to Eric. And let's randomize that. Uh, two and a five, seven times. Name on top gets it. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, and seven. 400 is a decent amount of points for somebody. You can get some... Over the years, they've really improved that reward store. That goes to Jared Gomez. There you go, Jared. A little consolation prize at the end for you. Thanks, everyone. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.